Hey guys, welcome to Myers Woodshop Shop Tour 2020. Come on in, let me show you around. So we're gonna follow last year. I'm gonna swing you over to this side of the shop first. What's ironic about this year is right after we shot last year's video, I looked at Brian and said, next year's video is gonna be so boring, nothing's gonna change. There has been a ton of changes and they were unexpected. So let me walk you through what we got going on. So we'll start over here in the corner, like I did last year. You can see this stand is still in the same place it is. And we have the micro jigs and stuff for table saw safety still in the same place. But now we have some vacuum apparati in this area. And you'll notice my vacuum is gone from where it was up top. That has changed up. I'll show you where that is in a minute. But we've moved the drill press down here. <clears throat> and if you look over here, now I, ha I have the armor tool bench over here. And it kind of sucks because it covers my double doors, but anytime I need to get out the double doors, I just move it. But I have run out of space in here for big stuff. So this is where it is. Rarely do we use the double doors. So that's where it's staying. If you swing around this way, you can see I have now the DeWalt miter saw and the Bora Portamate is in this corner with my DeWalt battery station behind it. And I have a little project of butterfly keychains going on with colored pencils. So that's on this silicone mat just drying. And then if you move over right next to it, this is a major change for 2020. I got the SawStop PCS. It's 1.75 uh, horsepower. Has the industrial base with the pump. If you check out last year's video, one of my main issues with the Delta was that I couldn't pull it straight forward. I had to turn it. And now with the pump, this whole base can swing out and I don't have to swing it and whack into the wall. So that's really nice. I have the fold out table in the back. It folds up. So it's the outfeed table. You see, we just pull that up and that makes me not need an outfeed table for in here. Also, I have this magnetic cover on top to protect the work surface, the cast iron right here. And this is from MLCS if you want one. And I've done a little video about that. Check my other videos. But now it becomes another work surface because in a small shop, every surface is a work surface. Another thing you can see at the very end of it, I got the table saw insert. I did not buy the saw stop table saw insert. I actually had the MLCS um, router table on its own. And I took that router plate out. I had to cut it a little bit put some hot glue so it would fit. I made it work because this is, remember this is the one where I, I can control it with a tablet moving up and down. So <clears throat> I wanted that feature, but I wanted to get rid of the router table because I just didn't have the room in this shop. So that is a huge space saver and really nice add-on. If you keep swinging around, you'll see my Shapoko has a well, the same home, but a little different. Shepoko's down at the bottom now. I have some lights. I painted it white so it would film a little bit better. And I put it underneath because I realized all the heavy tools I had underneath, I didn't want to get out because they were heavy and I had to get on, on the ground. And they weren't convenient. If they're up top, I can use them a lot easier. And I will more likely use them when they're up top if I don't have to move them than down below. And down below, I'm not losing out on anything. I have to get down, set the material, pull it back out. So we've changed that up and I've really liked the change so far. So if you've made my table, I really just uh, put a two by four going all the way across right here and set that top, tabletop on top of that and then slid the shape hoko underneath. You can't cover up the front if you have a dust boot because it will come out and hang over. That was something I didn't plan for, so I haven't made it a full enclosure necessarily, but it works really nice and it keeps most of the dust in. Anyways, so on top we have our joiner. This is a new addition this year. This is the Ryobi bandsaw. I found this at a pawn shop for 90 bucks because I wanna cut um, small shapes and stuff, curves out on this one. So I have a smaller blade and my big bandsaw if you want to swing this way a little bit. The big band saw is over here in this uh, area and it is set up for 
resawing, and I don't ever want to take that blade out. So that is why I have two bandsaws, one with a huge blade and one with a tiny blade. It's a really convenient setup. So behind that, I have the um, sander, oscillating sander, and then I have the Craig Foreman that gets used once in a while in the back of the shop. And then I don't remember if I had this last year. I think I did. This is the Supermax Drum Sander 1632. It is a great machine. Um, it's worth its money. So uh, check that out if you haven't had that. It's awesome. Drum sanders are great. Below that, I have the Fuji sprayer, the Q5. It's the best one that there is. And then let's go up onto the walls. So I have the wall control pegboard. Most of this is what it was like last year. Not too much different. If you go up to the top, still that all is the same. It's just my paints and stains and resin stuff and spray paints. If you come down below, I got a laser this year. So I did the first editions of all the major comic book characters, X-Men, Superman, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, and Batman. And then right in the middle of that is of course the Wobi 50 thousand dollar skateboard made out of broken skateboards version 2 and if you haven't checked out Wobi designs YouTube you should because all of this stuff is amazing I added another wall control over here to hold different things and then we swing over of course I got the clamp wall and then the battery charging above that and then I did add Oh, maybe a fourth more clamps this year from a man who was just done with his woodworking and sold it all. So Brian and I split up the lot and those are the clamps I ended up with. We swing around here. I have nothing new except for a metal bandsaw from Milwaukee is in that case. And then again, above there, I have my YouTube lights and compressor, air filter and power. And that is this side of the shop. Let's move to the other side and show that off. All right, let's move over to the other side of the shop. So over here on the right side, this is pretty much the same. I have all these little bins. That might be a little different from last year, but my hammers and stuff are still hung there. Pencils and tape measures are down below. And then over here, this is where my computer is. I did build this little shop and another little wall control add-on because I have a lot of cords that I need to plug different things in with. So this is the desk we do all of our computer work at. And what's different is I did have a uh, Shapoko Nomad that just went to a new home for somebody who is gonna use it and love it, unlike I did. But this is a super new add-on. This is the Prusa Original SL1 resin printer. You can see inside, if you already know who they are, you are one of my best friends. If you don't, they are from Final Fantasy VII. That is Sephiroth and that is Yuffie in there. And Sephiroth has a really long sword. And that prints with resin. It's yucky, but it's really cool. So we got some guys there about to be washed. The machine right next to it is the Prusa C1 washer and curer. It's got denatured alcohol in there and it cures things for the things that print in this. So that's the new corner over here, and it is all my resin 3D printing. 3D printing was something I didn't do very much last year, maybe the year before. I think in the last year I had a uh, Creality Ender 3 of my first printer ever, and now I have maybe had 12 of them and love them, and that's kind of my new thing. So wood shop has kind of gone to the wayside, and 3D printing and lasering has kind of really picked up in 2020. And anyway, let's look right above it. So I have just... Uh, socket set and all that. I have the Silhouette Cameo 3. That is a vinyl cutter. Some things I'm 3D printing right here. I have uh, some more tools and then all the Festool stuff that I use. Jigsaw, Domino, two sanders, and the track saw. So right above that, you can see that's my sticker wall or sticker rafters. That is where if you've sent me a sticker, you might find yourself up there. So swinging over to the right side, I still have hoses I use 
Um, this is my drone. I have a DJI Spark, DJI Spark in there. This is all my glue that I use. And then these are all the hand power tools that we use. And then right below that, which is the biggest addition of the year, the laser. This is a 60 watt Orion Motors CO2 laser. And then I have the CW5200 chiller down below that keeps all the water flowing through it nice and cool. So if you have a laser, you definitely want a chiller. Well, this is the biggest addition of 2019 that happened that year. It has changed the game dramatically and is a huge bed compared to uh, a lot of the smaller ones that are out there like the K40. This is really big. And this is why the shop has been rearranged. There is no room because of this thing, but it's worth it. So I did a video. This is the video of the year last year was did I waste $2,300 on this? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, I never gave an answer, I guess, but the answer is no, I freaking love it. So right above that is a rotary. I just got this working. A video is coming out soon and this will do your Yeti cups and stuff and goes inside the laser to do cylindrical things. So that was an add on and I love it. So if we move over this way, we have my DeWalt lunchbox. No, I guess it's not a lunchbox, but the DeWalt uh, planer that everyone has and loves. And I did a Shellex install video this year and it is great. So on top of that is this where I store all my filament for my 3D printing. I have uh, so much that my box is about to burst. This wall has changed a little bit over here. This used to be the YouTube corner, but now the whole house or the whole shop is a YouTube corner because I just can't contain it all. But this has all the bins for screws and all that stuff. And then all of my CNC bits I rearranged in this one. All the upcuts, downcuts, stuff like that. And above that is the resin for the printer and then the fan and the router, stuff like that. And let me show you my favorite part. So this used to be the old YouTube corner here. And you notice if you didn't see the rest of the video, all of my walls now are white and have uh, insulation. So that was a huge deal this year. It is much more efficient and it's warmer and cooler. So this is where all my 3D printers have randomly been. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook over the years, uh, over this year, and you can see I've had some, sold some, gave some away. A lot of my friends ended up with them. And I am down to one regular FDM printer, and that is the Prusa i3 MK3S. And it is the workhorse. It is the best one. That's why it's the one that's still here. I do have two more coming. Maybe three. Uh, at least two more coming. One is the Prusa Mini. That will go here. And then I have a big one that I think will come hopefully next month. Um, it is the Artillery Sidewinder X1, and that will go at the end because it's very tall. So I'll have a really big printer, a medium sized printer and a small printer, and that will go over here. That's why it's kind of empty right now. But this was a new addition this year. I found this at Lowe's for $120. It was amazing. There's like four in the country at this price and mine just happened to have one. So it fits perfectly over here. And let me show you what's in the drawers. So on top, I have all my vinyl and such for the vinyl cutter. I have uh, if you order something for me, 3D printing, it sits in here until it's ready to be sold. I try to keep some in stock. Paper, pencils, are acrylic, and some parts for 3D printing. Below that, I have the random drawer of things. I don't even know really what's in there. All right, below that, lathe tools. I have not used very much this year. I've kind of stopped making colored pencils for my health because I breathe in a lot of resin. This is the electronics drawer. Um, if it's electronical, if that's a word, it's in this drawer. Below that, I have screwdrivers, paint, and paint brushes and zip ties. And below that, in the last big drawer, it's another drawer of random assortment of things. Uh, there's really nothing in here that I really even know. Over here, we got some more random stuff. <laughs> I have more lathe tools, 
We have my router bits in this drawer. We got my brad nails and some assembly instructions. That fell, they shouldn't be down there. I think they go up here. Assembly instructions, they fell off here because this drawer is too small. I like to keep my assembly instructions in here and baggies in case I need to ship anything. So that's what's in my drawers. Above that, this is like the, I was a child of the 80s, 90s is really early 90s when I watched TV. So these are the cool things from my childhood I'm collecting. So I 3D printed this Batman animated series um, Batmobile. It's pretty awesome. I found the Generation 1 Optimus Prime. I resin printed myself, my podcast character. This is just uh, something the kids put up there. It's a 3D printed antelope. 3D printed Optimus Prime on my printers. It's amazing. Brian printed me this, or made me, this sword. Didn't really print it. Cut it up, uh, and it is from Final Fantasy VII. I, of course, have the Lego Voltron in all its glory, because Voltron is amazing. Laser cut some Star Wars ornaments, Back to the Future Legos, a tower from my hometown of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and the Skyrim logo. So that is what's up. I passed 10,000 YouTube subscribers this year on August 27th. That was a big deal for me. I'm now at over 15,000. So thank you for watching and subscribing, and I hope to keep the videos coming. So one of my favorite things to do is buy cool stuff from other makers. So this year I commissioned Anchored Wood Designs, Gina. She made me my shop, and she is an amazing scroll saw artist. Scroll, bleh. she's an amazing scroll saw artist. There we go. And everything in here has been hand scrolled and painted to perfection. This is my shop. That is my kid's little power wheel. This is the outside of it. And the coolest part about this that she added that was a surprise is that the double doors open and I am inside with my Festool sander with my armor tool bench sanding something. And it is just amazing and I appreciate it. And if you want one of these, follow her on Instagram, Anchored Wood Designs. She can make you something for cheap. She underprices herself. She needs to raise her price because that is amazing. So, and then over here, I added this whiteboard for anything that I need to write down or customer orders or anything like that. On the back of the wall, we added some more wall control. This is the galvanized steel with all the rulers and uh, wrenches and stuff like that. So up above, all that is pretty much the same. We have the plywood and bigger pieces of wood over here laying down. And then over here is just the collection of wood pieces I have and uh, all that going on if I need any wood. And then finally up above here is the stuff that you just would keep in a shop or a garage that isn't woodworking that I rarely use. So you can see that up there. I do have my crosscut sled up here that is just too big to put anywhere down below. So I just pull it down when I need it. Keep some cardboard below that for shipping. And that is about it for up top. All right, so I showed you the shop back I had that was up in the loft, really loud. You had to wear headphones just inside the shop because it was so loud. So this year I changed it up. So my vacuum is actually, well, I have this fine vacuum that pulls out, but the shop vacuum that I use now comes down here and it comes, all my vacuum hoses stored underneath the Shea Poco. I just have a, like a brush to, on there now. And when I attach it to machines, it, it comes out under here it goes back behind these things. Then it goes up the wall onto the rafter. And then it follows that metal pipe going along the rafter, out the wall, outside. That is an external wall. And let's go ahead and follow me around outside. I'll show you where my vacuum is. All right, come on, let's go. All right, so we're on the outside of my shop. This is like the overhang where I park my four-wheeler and the gator for the kids and stuff. So I built this box right here, and if we open it up, <clears throat> I have my central dust collector, central machinery from Harbor Freight. It's up top, that's where the hose is coming. And then I have this dust right from Rockler with the clear bag so I can see when it's full. So it's always switched on. The cool thing is that it is voice activated with Alexa. So I have an Alexa in my shop 
and I just tell Alexa to turn it on and then it'll crank and I can control it with my phone as well because a lot of times when you're doing something with a saw you can't really grab the remote or walk over and turn it off so voice activate it so I did put some insulation in here because it does need some room to breathe because you don't want to suck out all of the hot air or cold air that's inside but I just lock it and that is where my dust collection is all right so I have an Alexa up here and all I just say is Alexa vacuum on okay so that clicks to the outlet that's controlled and now I've got suction so I can suck up whatever I need to and then when I'm finished, if I'm over at the table saw or some tool, say, Alexa, vacuum off. Okay. And about 75% of the time she hears me on the first try. So if you don't have an Alexa and a smart outlet or something in your shop, check it out. It's really worth it. You don't have to go find the remote. So that is my vacuum system. So that's my shop tour 2020. If you liked it, hit a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything in the video, Leave a comment down below. Make your prediction of what is going to come in the shop this year or what's going to change in the comments, and we'll look back on it next year when I do the next year's video, and we'll see who was closest. So if you have any questions, comments, send me a message. As always, I'm Ben from Myers Woodshop. Happy New Year. And here we go again. You see all me right now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's it for... <clears throat> like at a weird angle where I'm choking. <laughs> Cause we're in